Okay, so welcome everybody once more back in this space uh, for our final concluding uh, round table. As you see, we have no tables, just an imaginary one, not even a digital one. But we have all those chairs. As I'm sure that everybody needs a chair by now at the end of the conference. And you already know our keynote speakers, so I'm not going to introduce them once more. But I'm going to introduce the rest of the people in this panel who complete uh, our round <laughs> gathering today. And first of all, Lars Ellström, who you all know, is uh, the chair of the executive board of uh, uh, the Society for Intermedial Studies and who comes from Sweden. And then uh, Anne Jelsvig, who comes from Norway and who is uh, uh, also the organizer of the previous conference of this uh, society, which, which took place in Norway, in Trondheim. Uh, also a very successful conference, I should say. And then uh, we have here Kattenbelt from uh, uh, the Netherlands, uh, who will be uh, the organizer of the next conference of uh, this society. And uh, now uh, we uh, discussed and arranged that this uh, discussion will be moderated and chaired by Anne. Thank you, Agnes, and thank you very much for ho hosting this conference. And I would like to start by reflecting back on the conference two years ago in Trondheim, Norway. And then we asked ourselves, uh, should it be a, would it be a good idea if NORSIS, the Nordic Society for Intermedial Studies, transferred itself, transformed itself into an international society for intermedial studies? And uh, based on the large interest for this conference, the, in, the participation during these three days and a lot of interesting perspectives presented during these three days, that question is no longer open for discussion. The answer to that is yes. Uh, in addition to a lot of interesting reflections on um, intermediality, this conference has also clearly illustrated that we do live in a digital area. And I think that one of the images that will truly stick on my mind is a lot of the, an international community of scholars doing this during talks. <laughs> and what we want to do now is to make sure that in addition to uh, iPhone or iPad images of PowerPoint slides, you can also bring back with you some conclusions. So the question that we are going to reopen is the question that the organizer posted uh, uh, asking for uh, abstracts to the conference. And so what we have um, invited this, these speakers to reflect upon uh, once again is, do we need to rethink intermediality uh, in the digital area? If not, why? If yes, how? And we have decided that we will uh, invite our keynote speakers to uh, start. And we have asked them to, to pre prepare short answers to this question. And then we'll have a dialogue going on. And first, Marie Loret. So do we need to rethink intermediality in the digital area first? I think that uh, where there is continuity and there is breach, uh, 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 now we have far more media whatever media are than we used to have. And this has brought a reflection about the concept of medium. I mean, about uh, 15 years ago, uh, people who did media were uh, uh, doing mass media, such as radio, television, uh, uh, and then the internet. And now we, are, we have expanded the concept of medium to the point that we don't agree what it is. Uh, I personally think that it's a, a very poly polysemic uh, concept. It has different meanings that we cannot really bring under one umbrella. But is this, is this bad or is this good? Because it uh, brings together uh, people with many different perspectives. But I think that the big contribution of digital media is to 
have uh, uh, created a reflection about media. For instance, I come from literature, and uh, uh, 15 years ago, nobody thought about a book as a medium, and then came digital writing, and now uh, there, there's a lot of studies about the nature of the book and how it, uh, in, what kind of uh, ideology it represents, how it influences uh, reading. So I think that, uh, uh, that is really the contribution of new media, not only to have multiplied uh, the channels of information and what we do, uh, I mean, uh, the practices, but also to have brought a reflection on uh, old media, uh, the nature of the media. Thank you very much. And uh, Henry? Sure. Um, in, well, the, one of the premises of my newest book, Spreadable Media, is that perhaps the biggest shift in the media system has been how media circulates, not just how media is produced. So the idea there is that um, media is no longer delivered to us necessarily top down by broadcast channels, by producers, through processes which we might call distribution. But rather, media comes to us, we carry media with us, uh, in a kind of ragtag fashion uh, uh, through what I call circulation. So circulation is partially top-down. It's partially bottom-up. It's partially shaped by the producer's decisions about where media goes. But it's heavily shaped by our decisions about where we want the media to be, what, how we're circulating it illegally, where it's not circulating legally, how we're engaged in social relations through the exchange of media and so forth. And it's not as if this stuff, the circulation didn't occur previously. There's long histories of the movement of, media, of all kinds of media artifacts across cultures. But the acceleration of scale and scope and speed with which the circulation occurs, the bringing together of diverse populations in shared spaces through the exchange of media, means that something fundamentally different is taking place at the present time than did before. I think to address that, we have to look back both forward to the future and speculate maybe about what the long-term implications of this, but we also have to look through that rearview mirror. We have to look back where older media suddenly take definitive shape when we see them through the lens of the new. And that's what you were just talking about in terms of book culture or print culture, uh, performance culture emerging as categories in a much more definitive ways as we begin to take uh, take stock of what's taking place in the digital media. So digital media has expanded the capacity of everyday people to produce and circulate media in ways that are become a kind of almost banal part of their everyday social interactions with each other. And the very banality of the fact that we have capacity to communicate on such a vast scale is part of what we need to think about as we think about intermedia. Not exceptional text, although that's part of what intermedia seems to involve studying, but everyday text ought to be part of what it means to think about intermedia in the digital age. Okay, thank you. You can go next. What we interest is uh, why do we speak about intermediality now? Um, I think in, in, you're right, in the 80s, up to the 80s, nobody spoke about media and nobody spoke about intermediality. Um, in that time, uh, the key word was uh, adaptation in literary sciences. Adaptation was friendly or unfriendly adaptation of uh, literature in film. And it was a key. And um, <laughs> later on, later on, uh, another term, uh, umbrella term, came was text. You could uh, compare uh, a literary text with a film text by uh, a con concept of text, like Kristeva's concept, for, for instance, that was um, uh, made it easy to to uh, uh, speak to, to compare the of the, so now say media. Why media? I think uh, one reason uh, might be that um, it was not clear anymore what we, uh, what we were talking about when we talked about film. Film was not a film in the cinema alone, but film was video, film was, uh, be became uh, a part of uh, television, 
the film was somewhere else, and the film was ev everywhere. It was a multimedia form. And so we had to say, what is film in that case when we try to describe some this sort of uh, adaptation? And uh, it was not enough anymore to speak about texts, but we had to speak about uh, which text and which medium. And so it was necessary to, to uh, have a new term. Um, I think it was medium. And, but um, in my eyes and my experience, um, intermediality uh, was a possibility to, uh, in, um, after adaptation term, to, uh, to do it better, to speak in a better way about adaptations. It was in that concept of literary uh, 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 comparison uh, to film and so on. The question is why in um, digital time should we also speak about um, uh, uh, intermediality? And I think up to now we, we agree perhaps on here, uh, and now it, I disagree, really. I think it's not necessary to speak about intermediality in uh, dis digital surroundings because um, it is really we have no, uh, no access to that media concept anymore. Why, why, why should we speak about media? Media is a, an, an umbrella term. Media is everything. Media is, is traffic. Media is uh, an autobus in, in traffic. That is the media to, to move in a, in, a, in a town, medium to move in a town. Media's, medium is everything. And so um, <coughs> I think it could be necessary, could become ne necessary to find a new, more specific concept to, uh, to describe, to, to uh, observe and to describe um, the relationships between um, forms, media forms, uh, in um, um, digital surroundings and so on. Um, I think intermediality is not anymore uh, the, right, the right term to do so, just remembering that intermediality comes from that adaptation uh, concept. Okay. I think it's quite suitable that I'm going to hand the microphone over to you, Lars, at this time. <clears throat> Thank you. Since I want to keep my job, <laughs> I uh, guess I want to defend the notion of medium and intermediality. I will not do that now because I don't have the time, but I, I'm definitely more optimistic when it comes to the possibility of delimiting the notion or notions of medium or the idea of mediality in a way that it makes it really possible to work with. Uh, but uh, back to the, the question of uh, the digital revolution. Um, will that or has that already changed the way we work with intermediate issues? Um, I, I will give two brief answers, uh, yes and no. Uh, I would say that when it comes to mediality in terms of media of production, media of storage and so forth. I mean, it's quite obvious that the digital revolution is a revolution, certainly. I will not uh, oppose that. But when it comes to the other end of the spectrum, so to speak, the, uh, the critical meeting of, well, the, the medium materiality and the perceiver, what happens when we perceive when we get sensations from media products, when we work with these sensations and perception in our minds. That, for me, is the most interesting aspect of intermedial studies. And that area will remain rather stable, I would say, also after the digital revolution. I mean, the introduction of uh, the digital is one among many great changes and divides in the history of media. But we still use our eyes and ears and minds to make meaning of those media products. So I see a bright future for intermediality. 
That's good because I'm going to give words to the next host, so probably. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I also still believe that it makes sense to talk about intermediality and about uh, the, and to use the word inter when it comes to look at uh, relationships between media, being aware that all media function in larger media configurations and that kind of thing, uh, uh, things. Um, um, we have a history of uh, all the time discussing about the concepts and there are uh, many words uh, created with medium and media in it and often very confusing uh, uh, in sense of multi, trans, inter, cross, uh, uh, media, medium, mediality, mediacy, mediatization, mediation. It becomes totally confusing in particular when you try to translate these pre and suffixes in different languages. Is uh, the translation of remediation in German as remediatisierung actually an improvement of the original title or is it just a mistake? And in that sense, I'm glad that we get a step further and not just discuss about the concepts and not just discuss about the specificity of individual media and try to find out, starting from a sense of specificity, how they could relate to other media, but that we are now more focusing on the relationships. And in that sense, I think we do need more theoretical work in order to find out if it could be more specific and sophisticated in characterizing relationships between media, being aware that it's not only about the, the, the borders between media, but also how media create new borders and new distinctions, and how media could be used, how we address by different media, and how we uh, use media in order to position ourselves. And I think that are interesting topics for the near future uh, to, to discover. So that the, the thinking in terms of how media could relate to one another shouldn't start uh, so much from uh, the individual media as objects, so to say, as rather from interesting things, uh, themes, uh, by, by means of which you try to map how media configurations could function. Okay, thank you. What about you, Agnes? Have you had any time and space to reflect and rethink your opening question in between all the other tasks? Yes, of course. Uh, and first of all, I would like uh, uh, to make a remark from uh, a very self-centered point of view. I mean, not as an organizer, but as a, a researcher of uh, intermediality in film. And I do believe uh, that uh, uh, this uh, conference and, uh, and the lots of papers have convinced me that uh, uh, the digital age uh, does present a very daunting challenge for the study of intermediality mediality in film. And, and I, I don't mean it from the perspective that uh, uh, digital cinema uh, has replaced uh, traditional cinema and uh, the technology uh, has evolved towards uh, uh, different uh, newer and newer kinds of, of uh, new technologies in cinema. But I mean uh, in the sense that uh, uh, of uh, the cinematic, of the turn of the cinematic that extends beyond uh, what we traditionally think of uh, as a cinema. And uh, the omnipresence of uh, moving images in our lives. And uh, uh, scholars studying uh, moving images uh, are, have to face this challenge. And uh, here at this conference, I think I, ha I at least have not witnessed any presentation that in one way or another had nothing to do with moving images. So almost every uh, topic, every area that uh, was covered here, from operatic performance to uh, uh, video games uh, and uh, uh, lots of other stuff, they were all related to moving images. So this is one of the uh, things that uh, comes to my mind. And then from a more general point of view, 
uh, rethinking intermediality now, I think it is very, very appropriate that Professor Joachim Pech is the one to provoke us in this way, to question uh, the validity of, uh, of intermediality, because if you remember, our call for paper uh, quoted him uh, with uh, the famous uh, uh, sentence that intermediality is in. And uh, I have to also make a, a very uh, personal confession. At the beginning, when I first uh, drew up uh, the first draft of this call for paper, I uh, posed a, a very challenging question myself. And I asked, should we ask uh, uh, this question, is it still in? or is it already out? And uh, the board members voted that, let's not ask that question <laughs> right from the front, <laughs> so from the beginning. But yes, we've come back to it now. And I think it is very, very appropriate that it is Joachim Pech who uh, challenges us uh, to think about it. Now, one way to go around uh, uh, this uh, um, question, I think, uh, was offered by himself in in uh, today's presentation, uh, in today's keynote speech. Um, uh, and I'm referring to a kind of a deconstruction of uh, uh, the term into its two components. That is, let's think about the inter part of, of this uh, notion. What does it mean, this, this vision builder? What is, does in between, how can we uh, uh, think about in between? What does this mean in, in the context of, of uh, of the old media relating it to uh, phenomena that we witness uh, in uh, today's new media, and, uh, and also the notion of, of mediality. Let's challenge this notion and let's rethink the notion of media. It doesn't mean we have to throw it out, but let's think about it. And I think that's a, a very valuable uh, uh, contribution of uh, this conference and his lecture today. Okay, would you like to follow up on that, Joachim? Okay, it's, it's right, and I, I, I said that. Intermediality is in, and perhaps really it's out now. But um, <laughs> what, um, uh, what is necessary now um, um, for the thinking of um, the, the actual culture, the cultural processes which we ob observe and which we uh, want to understand, and these are very, very much dominated by what we call media, the new media, the digital media, and we want to describe it, we want to understand it, and so I think uh, we have uh, not to, to use uh, concepts that, we, that come somewhere else, from, but we have to uh, find out appropriate methods to describe and, uh, and understand what we find now in our cultural surroundings. And um, we have to, if, if, if we work uh, with intermediality, we have to see, we have really to say what is medium in that context first. And then we have to say what is between media. Between two media we can observe, we can say this is a medium. Is a medium just a, a smartphone? Is a medium an iPad? Is a medium a projector in the cinema? This, these are okay, these are all medium, but I think it's not what we mean when we say, uh, we speak about intermediality. Um, and so uh, I think it's necessary to find a method, a method for, for understanding our, our uh, uh, technical and, and digital uh, culture, and um, yes, up to that, and what can this be? Is this is intermediality really an appropriate uh, method? Is it a method, <laughs> really? Uh, did we use it as a method, or did we use it as uh, something we understand before we speak uh, together? Intermediality, okay, it's a title of it all, and so let's go on, yes? It's a basic, we, we, we didn't, uh, do not need to question before. But we have to question it, and we have to question it because we find always new phenomenon, phenomenon that are uh, not always media, that are uh, 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 pictures, images, and processes, and so on. And it's a question whether we can all this 
uh, uh, put under that umbrella term in intermediality. We should think about it. Yes, it's it's uh, not a provocation or what. We should think about it. Uh, and uh, we are scientists and. Uh, no, no, go on and, uh, and find a method, um, a critical answer, a critical question, a critical question to that um, yeah, challenge <laughs> of the culture in which we live. Yeah, and as and you want to comment on that? Yeah, uh, I, I've, I've sort of been spending the, the last three or four days trying to figure out what intermedia means because it's, this is not, as an American, this is not the conversation I've seen my work within, although clearly people here have been citing my work all weekend. So, so there's some connection between what it is I write and what it is you guys are talking on this panel about. <laughs> uh, but I'm trying to sort of piece it together. What, the picture I've gotten and the, and the impression I've gotten is certainly not one of a method, because there's an eclectic array of methods and disciplines represented here. Uh, which is part of what's really rich and exciting to me about this conversation. It's not even a subject in the sense that we think of a discipline in a traditional way as defining its objects of study because there's such an eclectic and rich array of media and media artifacts here that take us from the Paleolithic cave painting to displays on the, the walls of uh, using digital technology. That's not where it is, but there seems to be a field, uh, a set of questions, a set of topics that people here are trying to get at. And those ha seem to me have to do with the relationships between media, the intersections between media, the historical impacts of one media platform on another. And that's not a question that I think is going to go away, uh, even if some of the boundaries between media start to disappear or get absorbed into each other. In fact, the more they get absorbed into each other, the more we actually have to think about and understand what their relationships have been historically and what their relationship now is. So even if we all the screens disappear, all of the media blur into the digital, there still needs to be a historical consciousness of what this term media has meant. And I've learned a lot about that in listening to the conversations at this conference and came away with a sense I do belong here, which is reassuring since you flew me here. But the, uh, you know, um, but I'm still trying to figure out what connections I want to think about between the way I've thought as what I call myself a comparative media scholar, or what the conversation at MIT has been, the Media and Transition Conference, which is in many ways parallels this one, uh, and is an interesting would be an interesting place for people here to go and participate in even more. So, so I, I offer that as my counter provocation, as a total ignoranus about the history of your organization, but as someone who, you know, I've learned a lot from listening to the conversations that have gone on all weekend. Okay, I'm also going to open for questions from the floor, uh, but I think you wanted to, to, no, okay. So any questions, comments? was first used in the United States. <laughs> well, that's what it tended to be a little bit, you know? No, not at all. It's, okay. it's a different conversation taking place among a different group of people. And I can't help notice that there are more of you in Europe talking about it than I've seen in my corner of the world. Okay. Uh, any more questions either related to our opening question here or any questions you would like to pose having this great panel in, in front of you? I'm not quite sure if it's a question. I'm trying to get a handle on how this intermediality might help us understand the unevenness of media climates because it feels that sometimes when we talk about digital, we tend to smooth out the edges and think of it as a, as a finished, shiny product that everyone has equal access to and equal understanding of. And because it's so ubiquitous, somehow it's very, very smooth. And I just wonder if this 
might be where intermediality really helps understand digital culture is to try and expose the unevenness and the power relations and the, the gaps <laughs> in, in, between corporate media, between participatory media, between artistic approaches. I don't know if you have any reflections on that. Okay, I don't want to know who is want to comment on that, perhaps? Well, I would immediately say that's absolutely a relevant theme. Yes, because we, we, we read a lot of things uh, of which you think, well, that's, uh, that's valid for the whole world. And sometimes we think we're talking about the whole world, but there are still many differences, and we should be very much aware of that. Also in terms of access, maybe to give a specific example, uh, in the period of the, the so-called uh, Arab Spring, all these fantasies about how Facebook and other platforms should have functioned in this revolution. I mean, even s such, uh, I mean, and they are now in a completely different situation. And uh, all the, the, the function of Facebook was so much overestimated because there wasn't a clear sense of access to these new technologies. Uh, literacy of people to use these technologies and so on and so forth. So yes, that is absolutely a relevant topic to address, to become aware that although we live in a kind of a global world, there are still many, many, many very fundamental differences. Okay, uh, more questions? It's been a long conference and a long, uh, and I think we are going to expand to and into different directions. But it's not my problem. But if you return at home at your university, you find the department for literature, you find the department for art, art history, and so on. Uh, many departments they have their history and their special object, and there's a department of media studies. And the other suspect, oh, you want to conquer us. You want, uh, because art, art, pictures, and so on are media, of course. And uh, they have, in addition to that, they have, they're more fascinating to the students. And sometimes they will do what, what we always do. We see pictures, uh, art pictures, and so on, art in television, in, on the screen, and so on. Why not making a media? Uh, department out of a part of the media part department out of the his, uh, um, history um, uh, department in, in, in the university but you have to see the consequences yes it's, I could agree with it yes and so you have a university uh, um, um, uh, what's it, uh, university university at home um, uh, that can, can be called now media university. Why not? Yes, everything, everything is, sub everything is, sub yes. When I, when I came uh, to, to my uh, uh, Constance University, it was one literary professor who uh, was very angry to me and, and he suspected when, when I uh, established media studies, uh, you want to conquer it all. You want, you want to be, uh, the, the, um, that, that we are uh, in an unfriendly uh, manner subsumed under what you say is media. And if we want this, we uh, should say it, but uh, what, then, <laughs> what then is medium? We, before we spoke about books, not, no, literature the theory was not about books, was uh, about narratives and contents and so on about authors and so on. Uh, later on, uh, under the aspect of media, they spoke about books too, sometimes. Yeah? But uh, art history was about pictures and so on. And now you have media studies, intermedi what is then intermediality? <laughs> the, uh, the reconstruction of the faculties under the headache of, of, of media. Now we have intermediality between literature science, uh, art science, and so on. Yeah, it's a reconstruction, refiguration of, of, of uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, era. Yeah. Could, could, be, could be a consequence, but what, what does it mean? 
We have one more comment from, um, from the floor. Yes, I, I think it sounds like a very good idea also. Not that we should conquer every, every department, but that we should offer ourselves as being able to analyze a huge amount of information in other departments. And I think you, uh, your compatriot, you actually you suggested that we're talking about the mediation of man, so to speak. And I, I think some, some attempts to think uh, media studies, or perhaps what we call intermediate studies, some kind of uh, me anthropological, media and anthropological endeavor, that's, I find that very fascinating and, and promising, actually. And I, I find signs of that, what I've been hearing here, uh, going much further than earlier, I think, uh, inter-art, uh, intermediality conferences, which is very much focused on the traditional arts. And I, I think we've come a step further, actually, uh, towards some kind of media anthropology. Yeah, I see that a lot of people is nodding. And so I think that's uh, not to conquer the world, but to continue both with these kind of conferences and with ISIS is uh, definitely a, a good idea. So I'll make it short, and I have decided that I will give the last word to Lars as um, chief of the board. I simply want to say thank you. Uh, the keynotes, you have already had your 50 minutes of fame. Uh, so thank you to all assistants, present and absent. It has been so well organized. So, of course, we know that you haven't been all on your own, Agnes, but nevertheless, we all know that you are the one. <laughs> so... Okay, thank you for an interesting discussion. Everybody, anybody leaves, I would uh, like to repeatedly thank you all for coming here and uh, making this conference such a memorable event for us, the organizers, and I hope that uh, all of you have had uh, inspiring uh, experiences here, so talks, heard talks, and uh, uh, discussions that will inspire you in your future work. Okay, so I declare the General Assembly opened then. Uh, first of all, a few of you have asked about uh, membership in the International Society for Intermedial Studies. So uh, it is like this. Uh, the organization is, well, it's mostly like a network, actually. So being a member of the organization includes no fees, no obligation, no nothing. Uh, and the thing is that once you attend a conference, you automatically become a member <laughs> of the society. So you are all enrolled voluntarily, so to speak. Uh, if you don't want to be a member, simply tell me or write a few words, and I'll take you away from the list. Uh, what it does include being a member is that you, you simply receive information now and then about conferences, uh, events, uh, jobs even sometimes, and uh, not the least call for papers for not only our own uh, conferences, but also for other conferences around the world. Okay. 
so uh, first we should say something about forthcoming uh, conferences within the uh, that we in the organization will organize so i'll uh, ask uh, Hiel to say a few words because i think we are heading for the netherlands yeah, that's to say, um, the next conference will be in uh, the Netherlands, more specifically in Utrecht. So in the near future, we will think of several interesting themes in order to bring the field and the domain further. And uh, it will be in 2015 and hopefully in spring, but we can't be yet very specific about the dates. And uh, you, we'll, we'll keep you informed about uh, developments around this, I would say. Okay. Fine. And also, if anyone of you, you yourselves, or if you know anyone who would or should be interested in organizing a conference of the organization in the future, please let us know. Uh, because it's always good to plan well ahead. So, someone already now who feels like, okay, this is what I want to do? Okay, you can speak to me during the far farewell reception this evening, in, if that's the case. Okay, so um, next uh, thing is some information about uh, possible forthcoming uh, publications. Uh, first, I would simply want to say that uh, we are planning to perhaps start an uh, international, international intermedial journal. Uh, we have some plans. We have uh, sent a proposal to a publisher. We don't know if it's going to happen, but perhaps. So. Keep your eyes open and uh, you'll receive more information about that if it will happen. Um, Agnes, you would like to say a few things about that too? Yes, about uh, the publication of articles resulting from this conference. So, because you know, uh, with all these discussions and, and questions in, up in the air, uh, you leave uh, uh, from here and hopefully you will have lots of interesting ideas and you will have the, the urge, so to speak, to sit down to your computers and, and write fantastic uh, studies and articles about the themes uh, proposed from this, for this conference. Now, what I can offer and what I can promise is uh, that we have the possibility to uh, publish a selection of the articles in our international uh, English language journal, Film and Media Studies, of the, uh, the official journal of uh, the Sapientia University, which is Acta Universitatis Sapientia, Film and Media Studies. And uh, um, I'm sure that some of you already know this uh, uh, journal because it has an online presence uh, as well as a print form, uh, that's why I'm, I'm showing this, that it's not a miss, it, it is also in print, and also in a very attractive uh, sensual format with uh, uh, um, pictures in color. And uh, uh, the uh, issue that I'm holding in my hand is actually the first uh, one that is uh, the result of our last year's conference, which was an international conference with the title The Cinema of Sensations, to which we had uh, Laura Marx and uh, Yvonne Spielmann as uh, keynote speakers. And this is what the issue looks like. I'm not sure if it's already online, but if it isn't, because this is freshly uh, out uh, from the print shop, uh, it actually arrived yesterday during the conference for me to be able to show you. And uh, uh, there were so many articles, we couldn't uh, uh, put it into one issue. There will be two consecutive issues of this journal containing these articles. But I'm offering the next 
consecutive issue, uh, meaning this is uh, volume seven. Volume eight will be, all be also dedicated to the cinema of sensations, and then volume nine and 10 can be offered uh, to articles resulting from this conference. So I'm going to keep corresponding with you, so the email connection will not be broken, and uh, uh, letting you know about uh, uh, deadlines. Uh, where we need uh, uh, final uh, papers and also would like to inform you that this journal is uh, operating in a peer review system. So I am going to send all your articles that you send in to two uh, independent reviewers who will uh, read them and uh, 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 see uh, if they have anything to uh, um, a comment on it, and uh, if uh, the articles are accepted, if you can uh, probably work a little more on it or not, so we'll see, then uh, we can publish them. So I think this is a logical uh, outcome of such a conference, and uh, this is how it should be. I'm sure that uh, um, you are all uh, uh, somehow regretful that you could not uh, attend all the parallel sessions, all the interesting talks that uh, went on uh, during these three days, and this could offer you a possibility to, to learn, uh, uh, to read uh, uh, what other people thought about. And also, I, uh, on this occasion, I would like to invite uh, uh, our keynote speakers, if they are willing to submit their talks in a, form, in a written form, uh, for us to publish in this uh, special issue of our journal. Joachim Pech already uh, uh, generously <laughs> submitted his uh, text. I'm sure everybody will be glad to hear that, being uh, such a dense text that uh, he read to us this uh, today. Uh, but uh, uh, all the, uh, both the other keynotes, if they can uh, uh, generously also uh, <laughs> offer us a text, maybe this one or a one that they uh, think further on and, and uh, consider it worthy to uh, uh, appear in such a publication. So thank you. I'm, I will be looking forward to all your texts. So this conference will not end here. It hopefully will resonate uh, for a long time in the digital space, so to speak. <laughs> so with this of official request, it will be hard to say no, won't it? <laughs> uh, we have one more person who, yeah. one more person who wants to inform you about some relevant things. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I know that we are a little bit tired, but uh, it's a new initiative that, with my colleague Matteo Castellardi, with other some scholars that are not here, uh, we are doing right now in uh, Barcelona, but it doesn't concern only Barcelona. Uh, we are creating, setting up, and we have done some works, a new initiative on transmedia literacy. Uh, instead of intermediality, we decided to call this <laughs> transmediality, so transmedia literacy. And uh, uh, there are mostly two things we are doing right now. The first one, it's uh, we would like to create uh, a permanent observatory on trust media, the best practices or the most innovative practice uh, uh, about trust media. Uh, so to create a visual ontology to, you know, analyze and study these practices. Uh, and on the other hand, what we are doing is to create a new uh, scientific journal, peer-reviewed and open access. And I've stressed on this point, it will be open access. Uh, uh, of course, to do that, we needed to create a consortium of universities that helped us to support it. And we already have some of them, uh, just quite a few of them, and of course, I will forget some others, like IN3, uh, at University of Uvascular in Finland, Université de Toulouse 2, Le Miral, um, the University of York, uh, the uh, the University of Toronto, well, some others, um, but they are not there probably, so <laughs> that's not a problem. <laughs> um, and uh, we also are creating the um, uh, scientific uh, committee of the journal. We already got 
um, important answer uh, from very important scholars. And again, we forget someone, but uh, just quote a few of them, like uh, Derek de Kirchhoff, also because this is starting from IN3 and his program in digital culture from IN3. And uh, George Landov, Lev Manovic, uh, and I don't know, Marcus Novak, and some others that I'm probably uh, forgetting right now, and I just apologize for that. Uh, so if you are interested in this uh, new project, you think your university could be interested, your department could be interested in joining the consortium and join this uh, uh, permanent observatory, uh, well, just um, write Lars and that he will forward it to us and we will send you all the information you needed. Thanks again. Thank you. I suggest that you mail some information to me and I'll see to that it comes out to all members. So, okay, I'll give you three seconds to say something, if you want to say something, if you have any other business. <laughs> no other business? Okay, thank you.